for, when you're trying to go for um, 8 ounces of water to 16 ounces of chocolate. If you let it boil for any amount of time, of course you're going to lose some water. So, uh, as soon as it came to the simmer, I pulled it off the fire, I poured it in here on top of the chocolate, and you can see on the screen that it's been submerged. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go in here with my whisk, I'm just going to feel around. I want to feel around and see if I feel anything hard in there. Any pieces of chocolate that are unmelted. I want to make sure it's all melted before I do anything to it. So I'm kind of feeling around. I still feel a couple pieces. So I'm going to let it sit for a little longer. But once all the chocolate has started to really melt and soften, that's when I'm going to start bringing the emulsion together. Now the reason I do that is because if I leave some hard pieces of chocolate in there, after I mix it together, it may not be warm enough to melt them. And then what will happen is all the lumps. And I expect to fish out those lumps. I'd rather not fish out the lumps. So I'm just kind of feeling it. I still feel one or two. This is one of the reasons I like small pieces of chocolate. I kind of, you know, really chop it up. Because I want to make sure it's not going to be, not going to take longer than other pieces to melt. And you can see by my whisk, it's really melting. I mean, that chocolate is really getting soft in there under all that hot liquid. Do we know it's Not just yet. I'm waiting to make sure everything's melted first. Now, whether you're using cream, which is the traditional way to make a nosh, uh, or whether you're using water, um, the procedure is the same. In this case, two to one ratio. Two parts of chocolate, which is one pound of chocolate, to a half a pound of water. Can you use other things like milk or... You could use milk. Like I don't even know. Something else? Something else. Orange juice. Like, orange juice. Well, orange juice might work. It's very acidic, but it might work. Um, the other thing that, that sometimes we add to the ganache when we're making truffles, for example, is we'll add flavor to it. We'll, add some, we'll sometimes pull out some cream, let's say an ounce of cream, and replace that with some rub. Mm -hmm. Would that actually work if you put, like, lime juice or lemon juice or something like that and actually boil it and that? It's possible. I've never tried it straight. Um, that seems like it would be. It could be rather strong. Yeah. I'm just not sure about the acid. The um, a little lime juice, a little lemon juice for flavor is one thing, but I'm wondering how it reacted. It was all lemon juice. I'm not really sure. I've never tried that. Before. I didn't like all lemon juice. I meant, like you know, if it was part water and part you know. It's very possible to be a good word. And if you were using cream, keep in mind the lemon juice has to cream. You can have with curdling and yeah. some other issues. So the acid won't necessarily hurt the chocolate. It may just hurt the cream if you're using cream. But we're using water today, so water wouldn't be affected. Uh, I've often thought about using buttermilk. Because buttermilk is simply has an enzyme in it that gives it, makes it thicken a little bit. It gives it a uh, well natural bacterial balance that uh, is really quite good for you, and it, it would add some sort of tanginess to it. Well, you just add vinegar to cream and let it and then make it, It's a little different. I think it has actually like a cheese culture. Almost like a cheese, it's like a bacterial culture. Buttermilk is what's left over after you make the butter. Oh. When it, we make it in a jar, you put the cream in a jar and you shake it. Well, you're causing you're causing the fat molecules to bunch up, a bunch of them smacking them into each other, and they start to ball up, ball right. up, ball up. After you do that, and you take that out, that's your butter. See, I thought that what was left was whey. And we always call that butter. But it was like it's basically buttermilk. Well, and that's and there there is probably a natural bacterial balance in that liquid that that has a flavor to it. When we do a cheese, a farm cheese, and we add the vinegar to it, then what's left over is whey. Hmm. The interesting thing about buttermilk, it's one of the lowest fat dairy products you can get. If you buy it in the store, it's almost it has all the fat in it. You, you smacked all the, but, all the butter fat out. Right, so this is pretty well melted now. I'm going to go ahead and start little circles. Now, little circles in the middle. You can use a spoon or you can use your whisk. But little circles, what you're doing is starting to get that emulsion going. What you're going to notice is in the center it's going to start forming what I call chocolate mayonnaise. But it's like a thick, dark pool of shiny, wonderful, wonderfulness. <laughs> and once you see that happen, like it's happening right now, you can start getting bigger with your circles. You can make a dessert sandwich. It'd be really good. <laughs> 
Now, I brought this together. It's making a nice, smooth, um, viscous mixture here. You can see it on the spoon. It really coats the spoon nicely. It's an emulsion between the water and the chocolate. And uh, it's beautiful. It's shiny. It's got all the things you want. Uh, it'll look very similar if you have cream. It's just that with cream, you're going to have more fat and you're going to add um, uh, a different, slightly different flavor. But water works for this. It's surprising that water works, but it does. It tastes pretty darn good, like chocolate. It's just, it just, you know what it's like? The best analogy I can think of is like the difference between having a little cream in your coffee and having no cream in your coffee. You ever notice it has a little more of an has a little more of an acidic bite when you have hot coffee, even if you put sugar in it. A little bit more of a bite, but if you add a little bit of cream, even the smallest amount, it will change that coffee, right? That's similar here. It, it has a little bit more of an acidic bite when it doesn't have the cream. Now ganache can be made, let's say, with almost any liquid, but we also will make ganache sometimes too out of butter. We'll actually use, make what we call a butter ganache. But that is a different process. I'll teach you that a little bit later. But it's a, uh, it's a very, very rich product. It's is it really better? Huh? Is it better? Is better, yes, I think. It melts nicer in the mouth because it's so high in butter. But it involves using tempered chocolate, liquid tempered chocolate, instead of using hard tempered chocolate. But this product, the way it is right now, is what you'll be going for. Putting it in a quart container with a lid, putting a, putting a label on it with your name, and we'll put those on a sheet pan in here and kind of stack them away at room temperature. They'll be just fine. And by Wednesday, they will have set up just enough to be a nice cake icing. Um, if you want to make something else out of this, you can take a product like this and you can intentionally crystallize it by putting it on a piece of marble like this, agitating it by scraping it up like we do the table method with chocolate and it will start to get firm. And um, I'll do that with this in a little while. So I'll crystallize it and then we'll, I'll, I'll make some truffles out of it and roll those in a little bit of little cocoa, cocoa powder and um, we'll set the taste a little later. But I think you'll enjoy making this. It's not hard. Just make sure your chocolate's finely chopped up. Any big pieces are the ones that will are the last ones to melt. And um, if you if you get all of them melted, you'll have a nice smooth ganache with a wonderful texture, beautiful shine, and it makes a really good, really good icing. Questions? Is that the consistency exactly like This is how it should look today. Now by, by Wednesday it'll be thicker. Right. It'll be more like I would say a thick pudding consistency on Wednesday, where it'll be able to be picked up with a straight spatula and ice on the cake. And it'll, it'll be uh, thick enough for that. It won't be thick enough for piping at that point. It'll still be a little, too, a little bit too soft for that, but that's okay, because you can always agitate it to get it a little thicker, you know. Mm. Now, it's a, it's a neat product, but... Um, you didn't mix it very long. Is there concerns of over mixing? I don't want I don't want to uh, over agitate. Um, right now, this this is in sort of suspended animation. Um, ganache is you've given it two things at this point. You've given it time and temperature, right? The temperature to melt the chocolate, the time to uh, melt fully and form the emulsion. But we haven't agitated it yet. And remember, chocolate always needs time, temperature, and agitation in order to fully crystallize. So until we agitate it, it will remain shiny and soft like this. The minute we agitate it, though, it will start to crystallize and start to harden up. What's happening is the fats are starting to bind together. They're starting to form very quickly, and it will become like a chain reaction once we give it some agitation. Uh, as you apply it to your cake on Wednesday, you'll be agitating it. Not much, hopefully, but you know enough so you can get it on the cake, and it won't start losing its shine. But Today, if I, put it on, if I put it here on the marble and I intentionally agitate it, I'll be intentionally trying to thicken it to a point where I can make, you know, a, a firm truffle center. Um, but the more you agitate, the harder it gets. You know, as a few people have noted in our class today, that they found out last year that if you keep agitating, you'll eventually get so rock hard that you won't be able to uh, put it on a cake. It'll be too hard for that. 
there are times when we do that intentionally. I mean, we will sometimes agitate to a point where it gets fairly firm. We'll spread it out into a container, keep it as a, as a thin slab. And once it firms up completely, we'll cut it into squares and we'll then uh, use that, what we call the slab method, we'll actually then make dip chocolates out of that. And it's nice, it's firm. Uh, it's not as firm as something like hot caramel or something like that, but it's and not as firm as real chocolate. Not as firm as you know, this block of chocolate, but it's still soft and, and holds its shape very well.